terms of Pep Guardiola, how much credit goes to him for picking a full-strength side? He's taken every game as seriously as possible. Has a great squad, of course, of but course. still, he's looking to try and win every single he, game. He, look, if, that's the, the mentality he's always had. Um, but the importance as well, don't forget, he, he didn't win a trophy last year. Mm. And with this team doing so well at this present moment, he's looked at this and, well, this is the first tournament of the season, the first cup that's up for grabs you can win. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a wise move for him to go strong in this. Uh, get that first tournament out of the way. Get that nice, it's a nice bit of silverware that can then lift you for those big games towards the end of the season, which they're going to have plenty of them. I still see him winning the Premier League, but yeah. there's other, there's there's other competitions out there. there. Two down. They Look, they ain't, they ain't there yet. They ain't there yet. <laughs> I, they're, uh, they're 90% on one down. Yeah. And that's not the League Cup. No. That's the League. That's Can the they league. do the quadruple? Almost the automatic answer I is no. It's very, very but difficult. But looking difficult. at them this season... I think it comes down to, obviously, you need a touch of luck with your injury situation. If they can maintain the levels that they've produced in the first half of the season. I was asked um, a couple of shows ago if they could go unbeaten through the season in the Premier League, and I said yes. I see a special team there. I see a team that is going to grow. I see a young team, and I see a manager who is, is taking everything by storm, and it's going to be very, very difficult to stop Manchester City on, on every front this year. What if they get Alexis Sanchez? <laughs> <laughs> um, a huge fan of him. Yeah. Uh, would he, even the quality of Manchester City they have, especially going forward, would he add to that? Yeah. That's how good he is, he would. Um, Does he need to take him now, do you think? To Arsenal need to sell now or get nothing. He's gonna. I, I can only see him being at Manchester City, and if it isn't in this transfer window, it'd be for free in the summer. Yeah. Um, should City think, go for him in this transfer window? I think they should. I'm, I'm, yeah, because, I'm sure they try, but it, listen, it, yeah. Arsenal have to sell. They don't have yeah. to. Yeah. They can say, well, listen, we got this far. We will see it out. Mm. We let the money. Listen, there's other clubs. It's incredible. Like, situation yeah, but Bayern Munich, no, they've the first done. Place. They've done this plenty of times. Yeah. Go, okay. You know, we're going to Champions League, we've earned our money from having you here, then we're so, we, yeah. we can go for free. Yeah. But at the same time, would I take that risk? Um, I'm not sure. I think Arsenal sure. aren't in, in a position to challenge for the league, you know, and, and there comes a point where you have to say, do you know what, maybe it's time. And but they need, they need to be in top four, don't they? They do need to be in a top four. But there comes a point where maybe that's what they're thinking. They're thinking it's not worth the transfer fee for what the Champions League would be. be worth to us. It wouldn't be. So I think that's the only thing in the way. And it'll be very interesting to see how Alexis Sanchez approaches the situation if Manchester City make a big offer as well. A yes or no answer from both of you. If you were Alexis Sanchez, we're hearing that he's been offered £13 million a year. If he waits until the end of the season, he gets a £30 million signing on fee. <laughs> yeah. You're Alexis Sanchez, do you sign now or do you sign at the end of the season? Um, it's <laughs> 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 a lot of money. It's <laughs> a lot of money, no matter how much money you got. Um, I would love to have that problem. Yeah, it's a great problem to have. <laughs> it's a positive problem. It is a, that, that is one of the most positive problems you could ever, <laughs> ever wish for. So, um, no. It's a, it, it depends what his motivations are. Some players' motivations are money. Some players' motivations are trophies. If his motivation is trophies, then he's in a fantastic position to go now. But if money's the motivation, then why? What's another five months when you can get thirty million in your in your bank account at the end of it? But, <laughs> yeah, but he, look, money won't be a problem to this guy. Exactly. Um, he'll have the opportunity. Look, he hasn't got a World Cup in this summer, and that's hurt him. Mm. I feel that's yeah. that's played a big part in his form at the start of the season. Probably he's played too many games. Um, this guy hasn't missed a, a summer. He's continuously played for, yeah. football for the last four years. So, through the after effects, especially not qualifying for the World Cup, hurt him. Because um, he got a little bit of stick back home, which had been new to him as well. He's never been used to that. He's yeah. been a hero in Chile. Um, but at the same time, if you're looking at it now, you still, you know, you've got a club like Manchester City. You've got four trophies you can go for. Exactly. Uh, would you want to be part of that? I'm sure that'll probably be the the main motive for him. City go to Liverpool on Sunday. Um, what have Liverpool learned tonight? I think if there's one team in the way that they play that could cause Manchester City the problems. You look at Bristol City today scoring in transition when pressing the ball. And even though the game at the Etihad had finished, the, the scoreline was more of a reflection of the red card than anything else for me. The first 20, 25 minutes, I've not seen a team cause Manchester City problems like Liverpool have with their counter-pressing, with their Until pace. tonight. Yeah. Until tonight, exactly. Until their pace on the break. So I think this is a huge game for Manchester City. If they can 
and navigate this one, then they're in a fantastic position. And I, I don't want to say I'm right, but they're in a great position to, to go through the season unbeaten. I think they're capable of doing that. Yeah, it's not necessarily about being unbeaten. It is about just trying to win the trophy. That's the important thing. Yes. But they do have a great chance of doing it. Is this one of the games, a handful of games, where you think they get through this and look, they can in, do in, it? Look, in the Premier League, you, you never quite know. Mm. Because, you know, Huddersfield, look, they need Manchester, Manchester City Park, with, with, Palace, yeah. with a better team, Crystal Palace. So mm. you, you, you can lose games anywhere in this league. Mm. Um, but at the same time, with, with Liverpool, the way they play, and it being at Anfield as well, uh, it'd be, it's difficult because every time Manchester City plays, so they went to Old Trafford, we said that was their biggest test, <laughs> Chelsea before that. But I really, I truly believe, it's not because, you know, I'm a Liverpool supporter, but I just, with the stadium, with the atmosphere, you know, with the atmosphere that's created in that stadium, the way Liverpool play, mm. this is their biggest test for me so far this yeah. season. Um, and if they can come through this, then they might. Then they might. But then, you know, there's, there's Spurs, anyway. there's plenty of places as well. Mm. So there's, there's Brighton, Brighton, of course, Brighton, we forgot about them. We never yeah. forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> Are Liverpool a better or worse side with Coutinho out and Van Dijk in? Oh. <laughs> Look, I would prefer to have Coutinho in as well. Um, Van Dijk was a must. Yeah. Was a must. They, they, Liverpool defensively have had problems for you know, um, for a good couple of seasons now. Uh, goalkeeping issue is still an issue, still a problem. Defensive midfielder, so everything really defensively. Mm. Um, and it's, it's not, all right, the, they do leave the team exposed. Mm. You know, the team is exposed, sorry, but the way they press. Yeah. But I also felt, you know, at times individually they've struggled. You know, if, if the goalkeeper hasn't made a mistake, and fortunately one of the centre-backs have made a mistake, left-back issue, um, even Moreno done, mm. hasn't done too bad this season, this season, though he's been injured, but, I'm still unsure. Yeah. I'm still unsure. But I'd like to, I'd like to see that area covered. Um, I'm happy they got Van Dijk. I think it's a very, very good he's outstanding. Yeah, he's a for, good player. It's, you see in his temperament the way he approached the game against Everton and yes, he scored the, the winning goal, but it was more his overall play, he has a he has an aura about him. You know, mm. he's, he's calm in possession, he reads the game well. He's a man mountain, fantastic in the air, and he was something that Liverpool had to address and, and they went out early and, and fair play to Liverpool. They got him right at the beginning of the transfer. They, they should have got him in the summer. They should have. They should have got him in the summer and made a mess of it. They did. £146 million is a heck of a lot of money, but will we not know whether it was a really good deal until we see what they do with it? It, it was a... Uh, Liverpool have... Um, they wouldn't have wanted to let him go. Mm. But, like I said earlier on, um, before, it all, before it all happened in the summer, you know, I thought they were going to have to let it happen because yeah. it's Barcelona. And Coutinho being Brazilian, yeah. um, they're drawn towards Barcelona because of the, the great Brazilians they've had play for that club. Um, I thought it was, you know, it, it didn't happen in the summer, probably because the way it, it all happened, even with the way Liverpool, you know, that move fell through with Van Dijk. So it was a, it was a standoff with everyone then. Exactly. It was like, we're not selling. But, you know, I, I actually do feel Liverpool made the right decision um, for the player as well. Yeah. You know, I've looked it, after Coutinho right for the club too. too as well. I think there comes a point where if a player is that determined to leave a football club, it becomes detrimental to the rest yeah, but, of the squad. But I, I don't think he's like that. No, I'm not saying he's a yeah. problem. I'm saying, you know, you've been in dressing rooms. When a player is itching to go somewhere, it can create a, an atmosphere where other players are aware of that. Mm. And, and rather, sometimes dealing with the situation there and then, letting him go, getting the best amount of money you can. And, and now they're in a position in January where maybe they can go and, and find a replacement. But it's going to be very difficult to find a, a replacement of the calibre of Coutinho because he's an absolutely outstanding footballer. One last thing as well. Christian Perslow said here last night that it's not a top six, it's becoming a, a three and a three. How important is it in Liverpool's recent history? He, because he also said that perhaps Jurgen Klopp, if they, they're not given the finances to go to the next level and, and really challenge at the top, then he could leave as well. How important is this period right now for Liverpool? Well, it's been an important period in, you know, since, they, since they last won the league. You know, every year has been, um, you know, they, they, they're searching for that league title. Mm. It's huge, you know, because they've dominated. Like Manchester United, you know, a number of years when Liverpool were dominating, they wanted to get back to the top. Liverpool fans always want to get back to the top, always want to get back to, you know, winning the leagues, being the most dominant team in the UK. Mm. Um, sorry, in English football, in the English Premier League. Um, challenging them for European Cups. But then they have it's, to use this, this money extremely wisely, But the game's don't different they? now. It's, we're in a different world. We're in a different world. Now we see countries owning football clubs. 
<laughs> you can't yeah. you, you can't compete with these people. You can, you will not be able to compete with Manchester City no matter how good Liverpool Football Club is and it's, mm. it's a special football club with a history. Um, finances, they're a rich club. But it's like I said, we're talking about countries owning clubs now. It's a different world. And you know, even you know, your recruitment, you're looking for players now, but there's also other clubs, not just Man City, there's PSG. Yeah, there's other it's, clubs it's out there now well. who are setting the bar so high. Very difficult now to compete with them financially, and it's I just the way the world is at this present moment. And Liverpool are gonna get back to that. We all, we all hope. Mm. I think the, the way the finances that, is now the, is very difficult. The job that Klopp did with Dortmund, a Dortmund side on a budget that was nowhere in comparison to Bayern Munich, and the fact that how, how he challenged them in Germany, not just in Germany, but in, in European football, getting to the Europa, um, European Cup final and playing against mm. Munich. I think they've got the right guy in charge. I think in order for a team like Liverpool to to fight against those clubs, the countries that are owning clubs, you need, again, a fundamental way of playing. And I think Klopp delivers that for them.